morning guys on day three. Today is gonna be a very long day at almost 30 kilometers. We also have very little pilgrim support along the way. There's a town halfway where I can uh, resupply, probably have lunch, but nothing else in between. Last night uh, I did laundry. Yes, so I have a new set of clothes. I'm all ready to go. Today we're also joining another Camino, the one from A Coruña. So there's gonna be an influx of all the pilgrims and we're climbing about 500 meters of elevation. I hope that it will be a steady climb, but that would just be too easy, right? It's gonna be a roller coaster ride. There's this beautiful aroma in the air, and the day started with a climb just to test your commitment, to test your spirits. At least the weather forecast looks good. It's not gonna be any rain today, at least only 2% chance for the next couple of hours, and then sunny blue skies. While we're on the subject, uh, the longer you're out here, the more in tune you become with the environment. You start to predict when a storm is gonna come, when it's gonna rain. You can see a sudden shift in the wind. <laughs> the temperature starting to drop, the clouds rolling in, the humidity rising in the air. But mostly I rely on a weather app on my phone. Now, today is Thursday, May 2nd, 2019, and I plan to get to Santiago two days from now on Saturday, taking a bus to uh, Muxia and then walking to Fisterra, where I will end my trip. But the weather forecast says that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, pretty much the end of my trip, is gonna rain a lot. So, if I do a double tomorrow and make it to Santiago, or I'm gonna have to scrap my plans to walk from Muxia to Fisterra. What do you think I should do? Now don't use me as a guinea pig, I don't wanna walk 40 kilometers. We'll see, we'll see what happens. It is 10 a.m. and I'm just outside the town of Presedo, about the halfway point of the day, but definitely the halfway point of the trip. Right behind me is the mile marker. I started at 109, so uh, do the math. Halfway point of the trip, it has gone by so fast. Beautiful views, and I hope that what remains is even uh, more beautiful. But right now, I'm gonna look in Presedo if there's a place to uh, get a snack maybe get something to eat for the road as there is nothing else after this town until I get to Hospital, which is uh, where I'm gonna be staying. An albergue in the middle of nowhere, but we'll deal with that when we get there.
Well, that was a good uh, mid-morning break at a maison with a medieval theme to it. There were paintings uh, all over the walls. They even had a night. I mean, it's a very special place. Uh, I was the only one there for a while. I was having uh, the second breakfast. It was uh, cafe con leche, like a homemade uh, pastry and uh, sparkling water, talking to the owner about the inspiration for the place. And then uh, two, three, four of the pilgrims uh, showed up right behind me as I was leaving and uh, got myself a pretty neat uh, stamp and also some supplies uh, for the road because there's not gonna be any more pilgrim support for almost uh, 15 kilometers. There's a bar, I think it's like three kilometers before the finish line for the day. So that would be like a late uh, lunch, if, uh, if they're open, of course. Back into the countryside. to the top about uh, 12 30 after a nice climb if you don't the Camino del Norte is more of the same especially uh, the climbing part sun is out blue skies windy uh, but you get the beautiful views of uh, Acaruña down below I put a pebble in the marker on top and then have myself a banana for a snack I think from now on it's just a downhill smooth probably hit the road at some point and uh, make my way down to uh, hospital probably stop at the bar secure myself uh, some lunch and not take a risk of uh, not having anything by the time I get to uh, hospital well I'm at uh, marker 43 kilometer 43 the juncture between the two paths the one from uh, Coruña and the one from Ferrol Woohoo! right behind me there you go that would be Ferrol. This would be a Coruña on a very busy road. The remaining of the walk is gonna be a downhill on the AC 542. See if I get to that uh, albergue really quick, take a shower, have some lunch. It is uh, almost 1 p.m., 30 kilometers down. They went down smooth like a chupito. I haven't had one of those in a while. What a great call it was to make a quick stop on that bar on the side of the road. I went inside, there were all the pilgrims already there and uh, the lady the, the, that runs the bar, the hospitality, just amazing. She made me sit down and put my feet on a stool, gave me a caña and then uh, she made me uh, an omelet sandwich with tomatoes. It was just all around perfect. Gave me two stamps, made me sign her book. No choice because I was the first Cuban in the bar. So what can I say? This is the best way to get to town. I still got two kilometers to go to get to the albergue. And I wouldn't mind walking back here just to have 
dinner because this is what it's all about. Finally, I uh, made it to town. I'm in search for the albergue, but not before going by a beautiful field of uh, yellow flowers. There were bees all around pollinating the flowers, and I felt like I was completely surrounded. And uh, hopefully, I won't get lost now and ruin the moment. Uh, but I mean, this is just like a tiny village. There should be an albergue and a bar right across the street. And uh, that's about it. Let's see if I can follow the scent of the pilgrims in front of me. <laughs> What a strange little town, guys. Uh, there's an albergue and a bar and pretty much nothing else here. And I've seen so many pilgrims just pass by. The albergue is completely full. I got a top bunk bed and I got here at 2 p.m. It is just craziness all around. After doing the routine, taking a shower, I uh, hand washed my clothes uh, and hang them out to dry it outside. I went to the bar for a coffee and just to get a snoop of what's going on around here. I had the coffee, water, and uh, the lady told me that if I wanted to eat here, might as well just uh, make a reservation. <laughs> so I did. She also told me to make a reservation for tomorrow because the town where I'm heading is all private albergues. There's no municipal, and it gets packed really fast. That's hence the reason why uh, so many people actually stay here is because they just couldn't keep going. They would have to go all the way. After that, I went back to the albergue to recharge my batteries and uh, take an, a quick nap. Then I was talking to the hospitalero, a Gallego guy, an old timer. He, we were just talking about the region, about the Camino. He was complaining a lot about all the changes that, uh, that they made to the Camino recently, the detours that they forced on us to take us to the roads so that we could go through bars and places like that and skipping all the beauty in the area, which is a shame. He also told me that the albergue that, we're, that I'm staying in opened in 1999, the first one in the area, but the house uh, was actually built last century by two guys that immigrated to Cuba. <laughs> it is six o'clock right now, waiting to seven so I can get myself uh, dinner and then just call it a day. Uh, tomorrow, I'm not planning to get to Santiago. It's just, it would be craziness. It would be like a 41, 42 kilometer day. I was checking the, the weather app. And if I get there on Saturday and then I take a bus and I go straight to Muxia, not stay in Santiago, then Sunday would be an ideal day to walk from Muxia to Fisterra. After that, it would just be rain the entire week. So that seems to be uh, my plan.
Well, guys, another day, another dollar. I'm back at the uh, burger after having uh, dinner. I had uh, the Galician uh, stew, caldo gallego, which is just delicious. And then after that, I had pork chops and rice. You heard that right, rice, not uh, French fries, which is usually what you get. And uh, that came with half a bottle of red wine. And to close the night, I had a little bit of ice cream had a conversation with all the pilgrims and it turns out that tomorrow most of them are heading to Santiago. They're going the full 41, 42 kilometers, but not me. I'm gonna stay uh, before, I'm gonna stick to the plan. I already made a reservation uh, for a private albergue and uh, that's it. It is 7.45, so much to do in this town. I think I'm just gonna call it a day. See you guys tomorrow. Oh, wait a second. There was a food truck that passed by at 6 p.m. So I got some supplies for tomorrow since uh, the bar here opens at 9 a.m. So that will be breakfast. The next bar is like three kilometers, three, five kilometers away. I have my uh, brunch there. And then after that, eight kilometers for uh, lunch. And then there's nothing for like 15 or so. So there's that. See you guys tomorrow.